All right, so let's do an error analysis of this problem. What did we do from step one to step two? Talk to me here. What did we do? Jonathan. <coughs> Would you agree we subtracted eight? Three minus eight is negative five. Is that correct? Is three minus eight negative five? Okay, next step. Someone else besides Jonathan. What did we do from second step to third step and why? Jake. What did we do? Obviously, I put squared there, but why? What was my purpose? Okay. We talked a lot of times yesterday. When you square a square root, you get what's inside, right? Did we get what was inside? And what is negative 5 times negative 5? So that works. All right. How did we solve from line 4 to line 5? I didn't do the work. Jess? We divided by 5. So would we agree that 5 is the answer? All right. Well, yesterday we checked our work. So let's check our work. Where do I put this 5 answer into? To the original equation. Right there. When you plug it in, what are you going to use now? Parentheses. So here we go. The square root of 5, parentheses 5, plus 8 equals 3. 5 times 5 is? 25. Plus 8 equals 3. Square root of 25? 5. Plus 8 equals 3. 5 plus 8? I'm afraid to tell you that 13 does not equal 3. So where did we make a mistake? Because yesterday, if your check didn't work, that means you made a mistake, right? Did we make a mistake? But I just threw you a cut fastball, and you were expecting a fastball, and you swung blindly, and you missed. Because obviously the check didn't work. Who is the most famous pitcher for pitching a cut fastball? Mariano Rivera. Right. Made a living of it. Now, obviously it doesn't work. What does that mean about our answer? What's that, Sophia? It's not right. That's correct. Our answer is not right. Now, but did we do the steps correctly to get to our answer? Stay with me here, Max. Did we do our steps correctly? Was all of these things right to get from here to there? Yeah. But our answer still didn't work. So, if the answer that we got correctly doesn't work, what we do is we throw it out. We thought we had one answer, but we throw it out. So how many answers do I have now? None. Now, I don't put none. Yeah, I put no solution. What does no solution mean again? It means the answers that we thought we had didn't work, and so we don't have any answers. We have no solutions. Is it okay not to have an answer? Yeah. It's kind of weird, but it's still okay. Now, this special scenario, this, this x equals 5 has a special name. It's called extraneous. And extraneous is a big fancy word for it means an answer that you thought worked didn't. So slide up here to the top, and I kind of wrote that out for us. When you solve an equation by squaring both sides, you may have solutions created that don't actually work. Those are called extraneous. Sophia? The answer is there's no answer. No solution. And it's OK to not have an answer in this case. It's not going to happen often, but it's going to happen sometimes. And remember yesterday when we were checking our work? Did all of your checks yesterday work? Yeah. yeah. Today, some of them are not. And those answers, Sophia, are going to be called extraneous solutions. And we throw them out. All right? So let's take a look at number two. Draw your line down. First step, 
How do we get rid of a square root? All right, so let's square both sides. My purpose of squaring the square root is to get what? What's inside? So what's inside is 4x plus 5. On the left, I have an x squared. Now I would love to solve the problem. I want to get everything over to one side of the equation and get it equal to 0. Do you think you want to move the x squared and make it negative? Or move the 4x plus 5 and keep the x squared positive? Yeah, we want to keep the x squared positive. Now, do you remember last semester when we talked about if something changes sides, it changes signs? Because effectively, to move the 4x over, what are we going to do to it? Subtract it. So it's going to change sides. So here it is. It changed signs. It went from positive to negative. And the 5 is going to change sides too, right? It's going to become what? Minus 5. And so now we have it equaling 0. And now we go back to last chapter. How do we solve a quadratic? You have four options. Okay? Those four options are the quadratic formula. What's nice about the quadratic formula? Always works. Drawback, it's long. Completing the square, taking the square to both sides, or what was the shortest method? Factoring. So let's try factoring. Maybe it'll work. It would be nice. Let's go over here, make our MAC tree. Multiplies to what number? Negative 5 adds to negative 4. Someone besides Jonathan and Jake, talk to me here. What factors might work? Go ahead, Caroline. 1 and negative 5. 1 and 5. Do they multiply to negative 5? They sure do. So it multiplies to negative 5. Does it add to negative 4? You bet. Can we take the shortcut here? Yes. All right. What is the shortcut, Jess? X plus 1, good, from this plus 1, and X minus 5. All right, now we use what was called the zero product property to split it up into two parts. X plus 1 equals 0. X minus 5 equals 0. How do we solve the left one? Vicki or Elliot, how do we solve this left one? Subtract 1. So x equals negative 1. Elliot, how do I solve the right one? Good, we add 5. x equals 5. All right. We have two possible answers. Notice I didn't say answers. I said they were what kind of answers? Possible. All right, ladies, I'm going to let you choose. Which one do you want to check, the negative 1 or the positive 5? Brittany, your call. All right, the ladies are doing five. Gentlemen, you are doing negative one. So, make a little T down here, and you want to plug it back into the original problem and check. So negative one, four, negative one plus five on that side, and five, square root four times five plus five. So work yours out, see if yours works. Ladies, did yours work? All right, ladies worked. Circle five. Gentlemen, did yours work? No. What do we call the guy's answer? What's the funny word for it? Extraneous. So what do we do with that answer? Chuck it. It's no good. It's not wanted. Not here, at least. So our only valid solution is five. The other answer, I'm going to throw that one away. All right? Sometimes you're going to throw them out. Sometimes you won't. Let's flip her over. Annalise, do you need a pencil? Are you good? You got a pencil? Yeah. 
couldn't see it, that's all. All right, we're good. All right, our second one here. We have a equals square root of a minus 7, a minus 6. First step, just like the previous page, what do we do to both sides? Square it. Once again, when you square a square root, you get what's inside. All right, who can give me the next line? Set it equal to zero for me in one step. Go ahead, Mr. Linstead. It's a squared, a squared minus 7a, seven a plus 6. Plus six. Zero. All right. He changed sides and he changed signs. All right, let's set up our MAC method. Multiplies 2, adds 2. What does it multiply to? 6, adds 2, negative 7. Good. Think of some numbers there. 2 and 3, add to 5. 1 and 6, add to 7. That's close. What's our rule? Take the opposites. Negative 1, negative 6. There it is. Does this qualify for the shortcut? It does. Chris Johnson, you understand the shortcut? Can you give it to me? Good. Good. All right. Now we use the zero product property and split it up. A minus 1 equals 0. A minus 6 equals 0. Who can solve these two for me? Tiffany or Brittany, can you do it? So A equals 1. And? Good. A equals 6. Tiffany, I'm going to let you choose. Which one do you want the ladies to do? This. All right, ladies are doing one. Gentlemen, you're doing six. Check them out. Ladies, does yours work? Gentlemen, does yours work? Yes. Wait a minute. I thought we were supposed to have an extraneous solution. So the first problem, nothing worked. The second problem, one of them worked. This problem, what happens? Both of them work. So what have we just learned? Is there always going to be extraneous solutions? No. Maybe there's only one. Maybe there's none. I don't know. What does that mean we're going to have to do on all of our problems today after we solve them? You're going to have to check. That's going to be crucial. All right, so let's see if we can walk through this last one. Anyone want to guess? One solution, two solutions, or no solutions? Put your guess up at the top. One, zero, or two, just to see if you're right. Here we go. Square both sides. When you square a square root, once again, you get what's inside. All right. Chris did a nice job last time. Who can reverse this one and get the x squared? Everything with it. Somebody else. Jesse, go ahead. Okay, so give me my new line. x squared. Minus 7 x plus 10, and what does this equal? Okay, it equals 0. All right, our MAC method. What does it need to multiply to? 10. What does it add to? Negative 7. All right, think with me. Give me some numbers. 2 and 5. That's great. That's perfect. That's the opposite of what we want. So what am I going to put? Negative 2, negative 5. Great start there, Nate. Got us right there. All right. My shortcut. Barbara, are you comfortable with the shortcut? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Very good. Zero product property. Who can do that step? Jess, go ahead. All 
All right, who can give me my answers? Someone different. Jo or, uh, go ahead. Oh, x equals 2. X equals 2. X equals 5. All right, Josh, gentlemen, get to do what number? Um, five. Gentlemen are doing 5. Ladies, you're doing 2. Square root 7 times 2 minus 10 equals 2. Square root 7 times 5 minus 10 equals 5. Gentlemen, does yours work? Ladies? So they both work? Is that okay? So circle both your answers. Do you guys remember how to write solution sets? Remember those brackets that you all love so much? There you go. By the way, if I showed you this, another way to write no solution is what? Have I showed you this? What's inside those brackets? Effectively, did I just write no solution? Because the solution would go in those brackets, right? So the solution is, there's nothing there. So that's another way to write no solution. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about the homework assignment. The first three problems, what they're going to do is they're going to give you a problem, and then they're going to give you two answers. And the question says, are either of these answers extraneous? So you're looking for the answers that when you plug them in, do what? Don't work. So they want you to tell you which answers don't work, not which answers do work. On the first part of the homework, they want you to tell you what doesn't work. All right? So make sure you're understanding on these 15, 17, and 19, that's which ones don't work. And then 21 through 28 is normal problems. Now, what do you see down here? Okay, really good to make sure we're, we're on top of